G'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And I just bought this 1998 Honda HRV, and by all accounts, it should be a positively dreadful car to drive. It's got a tall half wagon, half SUV body style, rear beam suspension, a non VTEC 105 horsepower 1.6 litre engine powering just the front wheels and 211,000 Ks on the clock. None of that sounds especially appetizing. And yet, to my surprise, when I picked this car up from a local dealer here in Wellington, I was shocked when I got behind the wheel at how fantastically it drove. And it got me thinking, what was it about Honda's design and engineering, and particularly the 1990s, that made all of their cars drive so good? Even ones that really shouldn't, like this HRV. Well, today, we are going to attempt to answer that question. But before we do, we need to get this HRV into a presentable condition. As it sits, it's got no WAF. So let's take it down to Honda and see what needs to be fixed on it. Well, we've got the WAF sheet back, and unfortunately, there is a fairly decent list here. A couple of bushings in the rear suspension are shot, the headlights are cloudy, and one of them actually needs to be replaced because of some internal damage to the lens. The wipers are no good, the radiator support is rusty, and there is a bulb out. So armed with the knowledge of things that I needed to get sorted, I took my cord out to pick apart to retrieve a new headlight. With that home, I removed the front bumper and the headlight bracket that runs around the front, took out the old headlight and installed the new one along with a new bulb for the passenger side headlight that was dead too. With all the bulbs now working, I set to work wire brushing the rusty radiator support, spraying on some rust converter and then repainting it. Now the front bumper was ready to go back on and with the HRV back together, I continued working on the outside by bashing out a dent in the boot, removing a few pointless stickers on the back window and scraping off all of the overspray from the dreadful rattle cam paint job someone had given a few bits of this car. Then I began washing. This car had definitely not been cleaned in some time, so it took a good few hours of scrubbing away to get it as clean as I could. Some absolute melon had painted over a lot of paint fade very badly with a rattle can, which resulted in most of my polishing efforts, especially down the side, being futile. But nonetheless, with the outside as good as I could get 27-year-old rattle can painted paint, I moved inside and rearranged all of the tools in the boot that were banging around, vacuumed all of the carpets and seats that were actually already surprisingly clean, and wiped down the plastics and windows. The final job, now that I'd done all of the mechanical and cosmetic fixes I could, was to take the freshly cleaned HRV down to Honda to get some rear bushings and new wipers installed. And finally, after spending way more than I planned, it passed a while in fitness and was ready to be driven on the road again. Now, with the mighty HRV complete, let's figure out the magic that Honda injected into their old models that made them drive so great. The first reason is arguably not what they put in, but what they didn't. How many SUVs have you heard of today that weigh just 1150 kg? Certainly none in the last decade. The new HRV weighs 350 kg more than this. And this lack of weight does wonders for the handling. Why do you think it is that stripped out race cars and go-karts are so fun to drive? It's because they don't weigh anything. You'll all no doubt remember from high school physics that an object in motion wants to stay in motion, preferably in the direction it's currently traveling in. So a heavier car needs more power to get it up to speed. It needs wider tires to overcome the inertia when going through corners. Making cars like Lighter, by default, makes them better to drive, and this HRV is no exception. It's only got 105 horsepower, and yet, because it weighs so little, it's actually really fun to drive. The second is their incredible engines. There was a time back in the day when every notable Honda model had an engine that revved over 8,000 RPM. The Accord, Prelude, Integra, Civic, CRX, S2000, and NSX all came with B16s, B18s, F20s, K20s, H22s, and C30s that made over 100 horsepower per litre and revved ridiculously high. And the primary feature that allowed these old Honda engines to rev high and make a lot of power for their displacement was their ingenious VTEC system. With a small cam lobe for low RPM efficiency and a big cam lobe that engaged at around 5500 RPM for top end power, not only do they make an awesome noise, but it makes a pretty exciting driving machine out of what would normally be just a run-of-the-mill family car. Even their ordinary engines like the D16 and this HRV sound great. 
and they rev to over 7,000 RPM, even without VTEC and just a little single cam up there. Everything Honda was putting out back in the day was powered by an absolutely fantastic engine. Another feature that made these cars really fun to drive was their cable throttle and light flywheel. No matter how hard manufacturers try, an e-throttle will never be as responsive or natural to use as a bit of wire directly connecting your foot to the throttle body under the bonnet. Old Hondas with a cable throttle and no clutch delay valve are outrageously fun to just bang through gears with because they respond with such immediacy. And when the time comes to change down some gears, that's when the light flywheel comes into play. This is not meant to be a performance engine, and yet the way it revs, it's so quick to respond. All it needs is just a little tap of the throttle, and the revs are just shooting up to where they need to be for the next gear. It makes it so fun to drive. And of course, the other instrument that is key to all of these old Hondas is their fantastic gearbox. Compared with most other cars from the time period, Honda gearboxes just have such a nice, short, snickety throw. And the fact that even this HRV, which is not at all a performance car, still has a really great feeling gearbox, just makes you realize that Honda really put thought into the inputs of every single one of their cars, even an ugly SUV thing like this. Another great feature of particularly this HRV and the CRV from the same generation is their rugged dependability. These old off-road Hondas have got incredible approach and departure angles, proper ground clearance, and a viscous center differential in the all-wheel drive system. So while they won't exactly be rock crawling with Land Cruisers anytime soon, what they can do is stuff like this. And unlike a Land Cruiser, which is big and heavy and expensive to run because of its massive diesel engine, this thing will do like seven liters per 100k, turn into a corner, whip the handbrake, turn it in. You can drive it like a rally car in a way. We're really gonna push the HRV to its limits now. That's, that's, I mean, you can't argue with that, mate. And you know the crazy part? This HRV is not even four-wheel drive. It's a tragic, non-VTEC, non-all-wheel drive HRV, and yet it can still do this. The sixth is their suspension geometry design. In most cars today, you tend to find four different types of suspension. The worst is the solid beam rear suspension. This is where both rear wheels are connected together by a big piece of metal, which means that they can't move independently of one another. It's cheap, but it certainly doesn't deliver very good handling. Next, we have the McPherson strut. This works by having a load-bearing shock absorber connected to a single arm at the bottom. It works just fine, but it could only move straight up and down. So as the car leans over, the whole suspension apparatus moves with it, and now you have the wheel on a slight diagonal, wearing the outside of your tires and lifting the inside off the ground reducing grip. Ideally, what you want is a suspension geometry that increases camber as the shock absorber is compressed. And the suspension geometry that does that best is the double wishbone or multi-link suspension design. Old Hondas used double wishbone suspension for years when most of the competition was using strut front and beam rear, especially in small hatchbacks. As a result, old Civics, Integras, and Accords in particular handle so incredibly well down back roads and on racetracks. While Honda has struggled in recent years to make electric power steering that feels good, and all of their old cars with hydraulic power steering, it's just such a natural feedback that you get through the steering wheel. I've been surprised too with this HRV at how fast the steering rack is too. This is not a sports car by any means, and yet clearly they fitted this particular car with Civic or Logo steering, which is really quite fast, and it makes this car just feel so nimble down a road like this. And because it's hydraulic steering, you get fantastic feedback, so it's really easy to place the car on the road and feel exactly what's happening with the front end of this car. And finally, they're just simple. Simple means reliable, lightweight, and easy to use. It means lower running costs, cheaper parts, and less distractions behind the wheel. While I still feel the true golden era for cars was the late 2000s, just before the world went safety and hybrid mad, but after this era of rust, 
paint fade and central locking being considered a primary feature, I cannot deny that these simple 90s Hondas are fantastic fun to drive, utterly dependable in all circumstances and super simple to maintain. And I must say it has been really nice after a two or three year hiatus to have a few Hondas back in my lineup again alongside my TT. And so with that I will say thank you for watching and I will look forward to seeing you again next time.